This is Cleo Lyon reporting to you from inside the picture book, Mole and the Baby Bird. And as you can see on this page, a baby bird is being kept inside a wooden cage. So, little bird, how do you feel? Sad? Sad doesn't even come close. I'm miserable. Very, very dejected. In other words, you're really not happy. How would you feel if you were stuck in a cage? Are you hoping to get out of this cage anytime soon? I sure hope so, but I have no idea how this story ends. There you have it, folks. Will there be a happy ending for this baby bird? Maybe we should read the whole book and find out. Good idea. <laughs> oh, yes, Mama, yes, let's read the book. All right, Leona. Click, would you take me out of the book, please? Activating transport application. <sighs> okay, let's read this book from the beginning, shall we? Yeah. Let's see. Mole and the Baby Bird by Marjorie Newman, illustrated by Patrick Benson. Okay. Mole found a baby bird. It had fallen out of its nest. Mole waited and waited, but no big bird came to help it. So Mole took the baby bird home. He made a nest for it. Look, he said to his mother. It's very, very hard to take care of a baby bird, she said. They usually die, said his dad. My bird won't die, said Mole. His friends helped him find food for the baby. His mother showed him how to feed it. Mole fed it whenever it chirped. And the bird didn't die. It grew. It's my pet bird, said Mole. It's not a pet bird. It's a wild bird said his mother. The bird fluttered its wings. Your bird is trying to fly, said his mother. No, cried Mole. It mustn't fly. Mole found some wood and some nails. He borrowed his dad's toolbox. What are you making? asked his dad. I'm making a cage for my pet bird, said Mole. It's not a pet bird, it's a wild bird, said his dad. You should let it fly. No, cried Mole. He put his bird into its new cage. The bird was sad. Mole's mother was sad too, but Mole kept his bird because he loved it. Then, Grandad came to visit. He looked at Mole's pet bird. Presently, Grandad said, Let's go for a walk, little Mole. Grandad took Mole to the top of a high hill. down at the trees far below. He felt the wild wind trying to lift him. Whee! I'm flying! cried Mole. Nearly, said Grandad. When Mole got home, he looked at his bird. It was sitting very still in its cage in Mole's dark underground room. Birds are meant to fly, said Mole. He opened the cage door, and he let his bird fly away because he loved it. Then he cried. <laughs> the next day, Mole went into the forest. He saw his bird flying, soaring, free. 
and Mole was glad. The end. Wow, Mole really wanted a pet. It must have been hard to let that birdie go. <laughs> You're right, Leona. <laughs> now, I have some work to do, but why don't you stay here and look at the book with Click? Oh, okay, okay. Mama. All right. yeah. <laughs> See you two later. Okay. All right, bye. Oh, gee, I wish I had a pet, too. <laughs> Click! Click! You could be my pet! My pet mouse! <laughs> uh, I cannot be a pet mouse. I am a computer mouse. No, oh, please. Pretty, pretty, please. With a cheeseburger on top. I do not care for cheeseburgers. Oh, I want that with something else on top. I am sorry, Leona, but I am not a real mouse. But I will be very sad, miserable, really not happy if you won't be my pet mouse. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if it will make you happy, Leona, uh -huh. I will be your pet mouse. <gasps> you will? <laughs> oh, goody, 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 goody. Now, first, um, you have to squeak like a mouse, okay? All right. Squeak, squeak, squeak. <laughs> Good. Now, let's see. You have to run away from a cat. <gasps> I'll be the cat, okay? Meow. Oh no. A cat, I must run away. <laughs> meow, meow, meow. Coming up next on Between the Lions, you'll flip over the fluff sound made by the letters FL. Hey, I'm hanging here anyway. I might as well watch. And so should you. Fly. FL. Flag. Flame. Flee. Fly. Fl, fl, fl. Yeah, 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 yeah. I fly. 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 <clears throat> it's game time, and welcome to the Blending Bowl. I'm Terry Bradshaw, and I'll be doing the play-by-play -play today for this incredible showdown. In red, we have Team Fly. <laughs> and in white, we have Team Out. <laughs> and there's the kickoff. Flap! Unbelievable, what a play! Come on, guys, let those wings! Well, that's about it, folks, and until next time for the Blending Bowl, I'm Terry Bradshaw. Hey, thanks for watching. Hi there! I'm Synonym Sam, girl genius. I'm getting to that, Rufus. Welcome to my bedroom. Uh, I mean, my lab. My dog, Rufus, will assist me in my demonstration. Now, with my super synonym machine, I will be able to demonstrate the meaning of words. Ready, Rufus? Live. Flutter. Soar. That zooks. A short circuit now could spell trouble for Rufus. Good thing I installed an emergency device for just such an occasion. Short story time with Artie Smarty Pants. Thank you. And now 
Ooh, ah, a book about a monkey. Monkey, monkey Flies Away by David Martin, illustrated by Scott Nash. All right, Scott. Monkey flies his fish kite. Monkey flies his cat kite. Monkey flies his banana kite. Monkey flies his ghost kite. Ooh! Monkey flies his clown kite. <laughs> Monkey flies his bird kite. A bird kite flies monkey. The end! Ah, uh, and now I will fly away. Oh, oh, bye bye. Oh, oh, oh. FM. Fl fly. Come on now, Mousy. Roll over, roll over. Uh, I do not think real mice roll over. Dogs roll over. <gasps> mice do not. <laughs> Leona, I... Oh, hey, hey, click. <laughs> this is not click. It's my pet mouse, Mousy. Leona, click's a computer mouse, not a pet. And I need her help with the computer, like, right now. Must return to computer. Computer needs mouse. Oh. Okay, Mousy. I know you're really a computer mouse, not a real pet mouse. So I must set you free to do the things that computer mice do. Goodbye, Mousy. I mean, click. Goodbye, Leona. Oh. <laughs> Come on, click. You gotta check out these dinosaurs on the net. So cool. Now who will be my pet? Monkey! <laughs> oh, monkey! Oh, monkey! Come here, sweet little pet monkey! <laughs> yeah, come on, come mm -hmm. on! Who's a sweet monkey? <laughs> You're a sweet monkey, aren't you? Good monkey, come here, monkey! Come on, monkey! Who's a good monkey? <laughs> Coming up, a hippopotamus! <laughs> Try saying that three times fast. Hippopotamus, hippopotamus, hippopotamus. <gasps> Thank you! Owen and Mazze. Wow, awesome hippo! Uh, oh, hippo. I better go yeah. put on my tongue. Oh, yeah. oh dear. What, what? No, 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 no. In this magazine, a baby hippo is best friends with an old tortoise. A hippopotamus is friends with a tortoise? Yeah. Wow. Oh, cool. What's a tortoise? Oh, it's, it's, it's a kind of turtle that lives on the land. Oh. Yes, but hippos mostly live in water. Mm. Oh, <laughs> and they're friends? Well, yeah. You see, there was this big storm and... What? Hey, have a look at these pictures. Oh, okay. Oh. okay. <laughs> see, this is the hippo. Mm -hmm. His name's Owen. Mm -hmm. And that, see, that, that's Mize, the tortoise. Okay. Yeah. Aw, look, here they are together. Aww. Yeah? How sweet. Once, there was a baby hippo in a herd of hippos. The hippos lived where a river flowed into the ocean. One day, a huge wave came and washed the hippos away. Except for one baby hippo who was stranded on a reef. The local people rescued the baby hippo and brought him to the beach. They named the hippo Owen after one of the rescuers. But what do you do with the baby hippo who's all alone? You can't put him with other wild hippos because they won't accept him. So, Owen was taken to a nature park where he was released in a safe place to be cared for by people who know about hippos. But he wasn't the only animal there. It was also home to a tortoise named Mize. Mize means wise old man. And he was old. Oh, 
130 years old. From the very first day, Owen followed Mazze wherever he went. Maybe he liked the tortoise because he was big and round, like another hippo. Mazze didn't like having a tag along hippo. Mm -mm. But since Mazze was slow, there wasn't much he could do to get away from Owen. After a few days, Mazze got used to having Owen around. And then, Mazze began to follow after Owen. <laughs> Mazze even showed Owen the leaves he liked to eat. And Owen liked them too. Without words, Mazze showed Owen a way to say, let's go. And one day, Owen said it to Mazze. They went into the water and hung out together. And they took naps together. <laughs> no one ever could have imagined that such different animals could become friends. But they did. <laughs> You can never tell who will become your best friend. The end. <laughs> that is so cute. A tortoise took care of a hippo and they became friends. Yeah, yeah, pretty nice of that tortoise, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> what? 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 What'd you do that for? Well, it means I want to go play. Remember Owen and Mize? Oh. You're Mize and I'm Owen. Oh, oh, nice oh, 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 of the morning. What's coming up on Between the Lions? Well, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, tortoises and turtles and hippos. Oh, my. Oh, and a song about how to find out even more about them. <laughs> All about everything, one thing at a time. And now the information hen. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> what thing will we learn today? Turn, 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 turn. Stop. All about being a turtle. Here to tell us about being a turtle, an actual turtle. So, I hear you lay eggs. <gasps> I lay eggs too. <laughs> I cluck. Bacock? Do you? Hmm, guess not. I have feathers. <laughs> you. Hard shell. Hmm. Wait a minute. Ha <laughs> ha! Now we both have shells. <laughs> That's all for. All about everything. One thing at a time. And now, Hippo's pulling away from Tortoise and Seal. But wait, he's stopping to test the water. Tortoise is catching up. He's next to Hippo. Seal is far behind. What's this? He's gone underneath the water. Into the stretch, it's Hippo and Tortoise. Tortoise and Hippo. And now there's a catfish in the race. And he's flying over everyone. And the winner is Catfish by the Whisker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I like all kinds of stories. And I like poetry, too. But when I need fact, not fiction, hey, I know just what to do. I run to my favorite bookshelf or encyclopedic stack for a book that tells it to me straight from A to Z and back. If you want to see, if you want to know why an earthquake quakes, how a whale blows, or how to make a phone. A paper cup. Here's the deal if you want to get real. Look it up. Look it up. If you want to see. If you want to see. If you want to know. If you want to know. How a guitar rocks. How a guitar rocks. Where do mushrooms grow? Where do mushrooms grow? Or how to build a boat. How to build a boat. Or adopt a pup. Or adopt a pup. 
here's the deal if you wanna get real Look it up, look it up Here's the deal if you wanna get real Look it up Skipping hippo. C dot C. See the skipping hippo slip. Look dot look. See Chicken Jane write. Yes, Scott, yes. See Chicken Jane write the letters S P L I T. Sp lit. Split. Quick dot quick. Let us split. Look, Scott, look. See the hippo sit. See the hippo sit on Chicken Jane. The hippo is not sitting on us. <laughs> Thank you, Chicken Jane. Bah! If you were a hippopotamus, you'd be born in Africa, in a river, underwater. You'd stay close to your mom for five years and live in a big family called a pod. You'd be a late night eater and gobble 100 pounds of grass each night. That's a big salad. During the day, you'd sleep and stay cool. When you were all grown up, you'd weigh 7,000 pounds, as much as 20 super-sized football players. And you'd be just as tough, especially when it came to showing off your big mouth and going tusk to tusk with your buddies. But you'd be toughest when protecting your pod and your stretch of the river against crocodiles and even humans. No doubt about it, with you, one would not want to fuss if you were a hippopotamus. Flying off the shelf once again, it's the continuing daring and dangling adventures of Cliffhanger! Today's adventure, number 414, Cliffhanger and the Amazing Hippopotamus Sculpture. Cliffhanger! Hanging from a cliff, and that's why he's called Cliffhanger. Excuse me, excuse me. We find Cliffhanger where we left him last, hanging from a cliff. Can't hold on much longer. Suddenly, Cliff notices a sculptor creating a huge sculpture on the cliff face next to him. Say, that's an amazing sculpture you're working on there. Thank you. I call it Hurrah for the Hippo. It's a celebration of the eternal bond of friendship between humans and hippopotami. In a flash, Cliff reaches into his backpack and extracts his trusty survival manual. Cliff flips it open and begins to read. If you meet a friendly sculptor, ask her to give you a hand. What an awesome idea. Say, Miss Sculptor, when you're done with your sculpture, will you give me a hand? Your timing is flawless. I'm just finishing up my masterpiece, and I have lots of hands left over. Enjoy. And that's why he's called Cliffhanger! Can't hold on much longer! <laughs> I mean, that is so cool. What are the odds? A whole book about Owen and Mazzee! <laughs> wow. Well, this magazine has pictures of other animal friends. Yeah? Yeah. Wow. Oh, cool. Let me see. <laughs> Mice cuddling with a cat. <laughs> Never thought I'd see that. They're so cute. Ooh, and look at this one. 
the bird is cleaning the crocodile's teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Very brave bird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, open your mouth. Hmm? Oh, open my mouth? Why? Well, let's play bird and crocodile. I'm the bird. Open your mouth so I can clean your... Mm. Oh, come mm. on. Mm. Open up, crocodile. Mm. Birdie mm. wants to clean your teeth. Mm. Come on, I'll be your best friend. Yo, check it out. We're going surfing without a board, dudes. <laughs> okay, because we're surfing between the lion's website. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Go to pbskids.org.